Hello, and welcome to part two of our derivation of the Huckel energies for the tropillium cation. If you have not already watched part one, you can follow this link here to see that before continuing to part two. At the end of part one, we had reduced the seven by seven secular determinant equation to a polynomial equation of seventh order that is equal to zero. Our goal here is to find the roots of this polynomial, then use back substitution to determine the energies of the molecular orbital levels for the pi orbitals of the tropillium cation. The first technique that we are going to apply is the technique of synthetic division. We realize by the various remainder theorems that if this particular polynomial has integer roots, that they must be limited to uh, plus one, plus two, minus one, or minus two. We would also recognize from experience of doing Huckel derivations for cyclic pi systems that one of the roots, which is always non-degenerate, has a value of minus two. So based on our experience, Let's begin by applying synthetic division with a root of minus two. Now, on the first row of our table, we are going to write down from left to right the coefficients of the various powers of x. So we notice that x to the seventh has a coefficient of one. There is no x to the sixth, so its coefficient would be zero. x to the fifth has a coefficient of minus seven x to the fourth power does not exist, so its coefficient is zero. The coefficient for x cubed is 14. x squared again does not exist, so its coefficient is zero. The coefficient for uh, x to the first power is minus seven, and then we have just a two. So now we apply the method. We bring down the one. Minus two times one is minus two. Then we add these two terms together to get a minus two. Minus two times minus two is a positive four. Minus seven plus four is minus three. Minus two times minus six is six. This is equal to six. Minus two times six is minus 12. 14 minus 12 is equal to two. Minus two times two is minus four. Minus two times minus four is positive eight. This gives us one. Minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. And since we get no remainder, this tells us that uh, minus 2 is actually a root of this particular polynomial equation. More than that, we can actually write down an other factor, because these are the coefficients of a sixth order a polynomial, which is x to the sixth minus 2x to the fifth minus 3x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 1. If we were to apply synthetic division to this particular polynomial with integer roots, it would fail repeatedly. So let's try another strategy. We would realize again from experience that when we have a cyclic pi system, other than the ground state, which is non-degenerate, all of the other energy levels are doubly degenerate. So that suggests the possibility that we could rewrite this sixth order equation as two third order equations squared. So what I'm saying is we imagine that there's some third order equation, which we'll write as x to the third plus ax squared plus bx plus c, and if we were to square this, it would be exactly equal to x to the sixth and so on in red. So our challenge now is, having made this assumption, to determine what the possible values of a, b, and c would be, but they'd have to be, to make this relationship true. I've taken the liberty of writing the sixth order polynomial 
at the top here in red to remind us uh, what our target is. And here we have our two uh, cubic equations that we imagine we'll be able to multiply with square, so we multiply it by itself, and then find the values of a, b, and c such that the result is equal to the uh, sixth order equation that we have in red. c times c is c squared, c times bx is bcx, c times ax squared is acx squared, c times x cubed is cx cubed. Now multiplying by bx, bx times c is bcx, bx times bx is b squared x squared, bx times ax squared is going to be abx cubed, and bx times x cubed is bx to the fourth. Now multiplying by ax squared, ax squared times c is acx squared, ax squared times bx is abx cubed, a squared times a squared is a squared x to the fourth, and a squared times x cubed is a x to the fifth. And now we just have to multiply by the x to the third in the bottom polynomial. x cubed times c is cx cubed, x cubed times bx is bx to the fourth, x cubed times ax squared is going to be ax to the fifth, and x cubed times x cubed gives us x to the sixth. Now we Having already lined everything up in order of the powers of x, we are going to collect the exponents to get our master expression here. So collecting coefficients, we get x to the 6 plus 2a times x to the 5th, a squared plus 2b quantity times x to the 4th, plus 2 times the quantity ab plus c times x cubed, plus the quantity 2ac plus b squared times x squared, plus 2bc plus c squared. And we realize that for two polynomials to be equal, um, each of the coefficients of each of the terms has to be equal as well. So we're going to compare the coefficients of the polynomial in black with the coefficients of the polynomial in red to determine the values of a, b, and c. Since there's no variables for the coefficients of the sixth power of x, it's both ones, that's okay. So now we go to x to the fifth, and we notice that we have 2a is equal to minus 2. So this tells us immediately that the value of a has to be minus 1. Now for x to the fourth power, we have a squared plus 2b. is equal to minus 3. Now we already know that a is equal to minus 1, so a squared is equal to a positive 1. So that tells us directly by simple algebra that b has to be equal to minus 2. Continuing to the x to the cube term, we have 2 times ab plus c. and we see that it's equal to a positive 6, which tells us that a, b plus c itself is equal to 3. We know the values of a and b are minus 1 and minus 2, so a, b is equal to a positive 2, so immediately we see that c has to be equal to a positive 1. And we are able to, by that, determine the coefficients of the hypothetical cubic equation that we square to get the equation in red. So now back substituting these values for a, b, and c, we get that x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 1 squared is exactly equal to this expression in red. And since it's equal to 0, this is equal to zero. So this is equivalent to solving the cubic equation, x cubed minus x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to zero. And 
essentially counting each of these roots twice because we have this square. So now the final challenge of part two is to solve this particular equation to find its roots. This cubic equation has a very simple form, a deceptively simple form. While there are equations to solve cubic equations in a manner somewhat analogous to the quadratic formula, actually applying the formula can lead to a great many difficulties. In fact, a thorough analysis of this type of equation and its solutions would involve several very sophisticated uh, videos all on their own. So rather than try some type of analytical derivation, which would be very, very um, uh, intricate and involved itself, let's just solve this particular equation uh, by using graphing. So we can graph this particular function and we see where which particular values of x lead the equation to be equal to zero. So these are the points where the curve crosses the x-axis. The graph of this particular equation looks something like this. And we would notice that it has roots somewhere around minus 1.245 at plus 0 0.445 and then at plus 1.8. Notice also, because this equation was squared when we had the sixth order equation, each of these is a double root in addition to the single root of minus 2. So now that we have that, we can combine all that information to work out the energies of the energy levels, uh, or the MO levels, for the trapillium cation. Here we have a list of our roots, minus 2, which is non-degenerate, and then we have the three degenerate, doubly degenerate roots. We remind ourselves that we made a substitution, that x was equal to alpha minus energy divided by beta. So with a little bit of algebraic manipulation here, multiplying both sides by beta, and then adding e to each side, and then subtracting beta x from each side, we realize that the energies are going to be equal to alpha minus beta times the particular root. So we can write these down immediately what the energies are going to be. So the energy here is, if you have a root of minus 2, this is going to be alpha plus 2 times beta. For minus 1.245, the energy is going to be alpha plus 1.245 times beta. If the root is plus 0.445, the energy is going to be alpha minus 0 0.445 times beta. And then the last doubly degenerate root is energy is going to be alpha minus 1.8 beta. Let's remind ourselves that these are doubly degenerate. That's what the times 2 here means. So for our final step in our problem is we're going to make a quick graph of the energy levels in a diagram. So here we've sketched our energy levels, the non-degenerate levels, the alpha plus 2 beta, and then we have the three doubly degenerate values. Alpha plus 2 beta is the lowest in energy because recall that beta is a negative value. Also notice that I put in a green line here to show the position of alpha itself. Alpha is the reference energy for a uh, electron in a carbon 2pz orbital. So we can think of any energy levels below alpha as being net stabilizing, net bonding, and any higher in energy than alpha as being destabilizing or net antibonding. Our final step is to assign electrons to the energy levels. And recall, just like atomic orbitals, we can stick two electrons into each molecular orbital so long as they have opposite signs by the Pauli exclusion principle. And we recall that we have exactly six pi electrons in trapillium. 
it originally had seven, but in the process of becoming a minus one charge, a plus one charge, it lost a minus one charge, which was one electron. So it went from seven electrons in the pi system to six. So we have six electrons to go here, and then we have the final four electrons go into these levels. So we notice that we filled up all the bonding levels, but we have filled up none of the anti-bonding levels. So we would expect this molecule to be particularly stable. We also realize that we have 4n plus 2 pi electrons, where n is equal to 1 in this case. So here we have 6 pi electrons. So we realize that we have um, an aromatic system. And it would not surprise us to find by experiment, as we do, that tropilium is an aromatically stabilized cation. I thank you very, very much for your kind attention for this long and somewhat tedious video. As always, have a good one.